Hello everyone, so we are headed off to take this dog to the vet to see if she needs stitches. She got a pretty nasty gash yesterday from her sister because apparently when you give a dog two jars of peanut butter, these two think that the other one must have got the better end of the deal and they start attacking each other. So we are headed off now. COVID's going to make an interesting situation though because we're not actually able to get out of the car. Only the dog is. All right, we're here. Like I said, it would be a little weird. So I had to call and check in and we are just waiting for the veterinary technicians to come out. Um, I don't know. They're doing paperwork or whatever. She's acting just fine back here though. Right, Dono? So she's got a big gash on her leg. Her sister has like some swelling around her ankle and they both have little bites here and there, but the gash is what we're really worried about because it's so deep. Um, almost looks like you can see the muscle underneath. So I'm gonna let them decide, but I'm thinking they're gonna say she needs stitches. All right, so here we are a couple days later and Tano, uh, just update here. She did not have to get stitches. Actually, they said with where the cut was in the bend of her leg and with it already being uh, about a day old when we took her in, that they were not gonna be able to do stitches and they were kind of worried about stitches anyway. They said that that deep of a cut didn't actually get beyond the dermis. So is that the right thing? I don't know. It didn't actually get beyond the skin. They said it wasn't really like a deep uh, type of wound. It was a really, like it went through a lot of layers of skin, but they didn't feel like it was enough to really worry about. Uh, they did worry about stitching it though, because they felt like they could trap in infection and cause more problems that way. So they gave her an antibiotic. Gave her an antibiotic for um, a couple days. We had to quit yesterday because after we gave her her morning dose, she had a reaction. So this whole time she's been fine. Now she's reacting to the antibiotic. So Guy's gonna swell shut. Um, couldn't find an event anywhere nearby that's open on a Saturday other than an hour away. And I'm figuring by that time, if she is gonna go to into anaphylactic shock, then she's probably gonna be there before we even get there. So we just dosed her up on some Benadryl and she, the swelling went down, she took a nap. Everything's fine. So we're going to be done with the antibiotics. Just let her heal on her own and keep an eye on that cut just to make sure that nothing bad happens to it. Again, time to move the goats, which means we got to move the chickens first.
Okay, so today we will be looking at a plant called poison ivy, kids. So you see this right here? I call that poison ivy. Don't you ever touch this plant, or you might get red bumps. Um, and it's a lot. Um, you'll see. It is about the size of uh, your, your pinky finger and, um, let's say, so, it's got rickety edges like so, and each little stem has three leaves on it, mate. So, here we will move this one. What? Three leaves on each stem thing. No, this is poison ivy, mate. I can see it with my very own eyeballs. Anyways, so, don't you ever touch this plant, or your mommy will be very unpleased with you. We've taken the wild grass right out of the wild are we on, mates. There's a camera on your face. Okay, come on. Come on. This is not a grass eating party. Now, come on. We are on the search for a Nubian buck for these ladies. Gonna hopefully have one within the next few weeks. Bring him on farm. And we are drying up the goats right now. Gonna look forward to the breeding process so we can have some little kids running around here next spring. We have started another batch of compost and we moved the silkies out to the compost bin because they were getting trampled in the front yard. They're so much smaller than the rest of the animals out there. So we, they were getting injured somehow. We're not quite sure if it was the trampling or if it was because we let the little kids put them to bed one night. Uh, but we did have a few that died, and so we pulled them all out and moved them out here by themselves. Come on, Chloe. Walk right into the garage, mate. I might have to kick your boot, hey. Oh, oh. that was weird. I am Princess Leia, leader of the Resistance. And I am not very happy trapped in Empire Prison. What about now, mates? We should be doing a checkup. Look, this is not poison ivy. Never mistake it. Never mistake this for poison ivy. Just because it's spiky. This is another spiky weed we like to call spikes. Okay, I just made that right up right there. Right now, we're hunting down a wily kangaroo. Oh, and I found one. There he is now. It's all heard of him. I'm gonna name that one Justin. He looks sweet, man. Whoa, look at that crazy hairdo. They sure do like their minerals, mate. Quick, rather than distracted, open up the gates.
quick. Grab the chicken on the bucket. This may be a highly dangerous um, predicament. That's what I was going to say. Just did. Oh, high score, mate. What right now? This very young man is going to take a dip in a pool. Tell him how you feel. Of gross algae water. This is a dangerous feat, never to be attempted by a man. Just look at this baby. It's got clouds in it. Hold on a couple days. <laughs> oh yeah, green water. Feels great on your toesies. <laughs> <laughs> so cold, babe. You can't see the bottom, so I don't know how well I'm doing at vacuuming. It's like vacuuming the house in the dark. Just sweeping, you don't know if you're actually doing anything. Mm, hit the cat. <laughs> wow. I'm kicking something. I can feel things on my feet that I can't see. Wait, what is it? What is it? <laughs> We have never balanced the pH in this pool. So no matter how much chlorine we add, it doesn't help the color. The next plan is to lower the pH level since we're above 8.5. And hopefully maybe we can get this algae under control. Okay.